Let us pray. Sa ating kaan ng kapida, at siya, sa usang fasa ng nagbibro, at sa usang kapitulay, at siya, at siya, at siya, siti ang na, siti ang nagupon, na lungtod na lungtod. Na wani ko sa ang kapitulay, ay ko jay, at siya, at siya, at siya, at siya, at siya, at siya, ที่ได้สำนึกผิดบาปและพงศ์ทรงยกโทษให้กับพวกเขาขอช่วยพระข้าพระทุลายจะมีท่าทีที่ถูกต้องในการดําเนินชีวิตและในการสแสวงหาการยกโทษภัยบาปจากพวกด้วยวิธีที่ถูกต้องและเพื่อชีวิตพระข้าพระทุลายจะได้เริ่มต้นใหม่และมีความหวังที่แท้จริงข้าพระทุลายสรรเสริญและขอบคุณพวกร่วมกันในพระนามของพระเยซูคริสต์เจ้าอาเมนเราทราบใช่ไหมครับว่าในหลายวัฒนธรรมมีเขาเรียกว่าเทศกาลลังบาป In many many of the culture there is a festival called a cleansing from sin ทุกปีในประเทศอินเดียนะครับคนบรรลัณจะไปที่ริมแม่น้ำฟงคาเพื่อลังบาป In fact, every year in the country of India, they will go to the Konka River for atonement, Kangyang Yangtze River. He will be a drop of water, a drop of water, because he calls the water in the river from the river. And the river is the most important thing. The people who don't have water in the river will be the most important thing in the year. The most important thing in the year. So once a year, the river believed to ascending down from the mountain top from heaven, and they believed if they put their body in the water, submerged, the sin can be cleansed. In our house, we will have a drinking ceremony, right? Or a drinking ceremony, a drinking ceremony, or a drinking ceremony, or a drinking ceremony. And back in Thailand. Neighboring country, there is a vegetarian festival where many people dedicated themselves to purify once a year. That way. แล้วในหมู่คริสเตียนเราเลยครับจำนวนมากมายก็มีวิธีล้างบาปดีละครั้ง And with us too, among the Christian, we also have the custom that once a year we come and rid ourselves of sin. ในช่วงเทศกาลอีสเตอร์นะครับเราจะพบได้เป็นคริสเตียนมากมายในหลายประเทศนะครับทรมานด้วย In fact during the Easter season or about to be the the Holy Week you see many Christians in many country literally do torturing themselves เขาเคี่ยนตัวเอง They whip their own back แล้วก็ตัวเองเป็นตรึงที่มันเป็นเข็มจริงจริง Some even go that far to crucify themselves on the crucifix. Why would they went for such an extent? Because out of the belief system that what they practice or doing will rid them is atonement from their sin. But when you look at the child in the way that you have done, just on from my religion, the teaching. But today, the lesson that we learn from the citizen of the Nineveh, the Ninevites, will actually display a real way of cleansing and atonement from sin. We can see that in many times we have learned that the Lord sent Jonah to the city of Nineveh, and the Lord will destroy it. A few weeks back, you recollect the sermon we gave that God asked Jonah to go to Nineveh and preach the gospel of repentance. And many claim, if God is going to destroy the city for its wickedness, why bother to send a prophet therefore? But we can see that this is a loving God who wants to show his compassion toward this particular city. Give them a second chance. But we can see that Jonah did not want to go. Jonah did not want to help this city. He was one of the people who was in the city. But you learned from the previous sermon that Jonah did not want to go to this people at all because they are so wicked. Jonah did not want to go to this people at all because they are so wicked. In fact, he ran away as far as he could, opposite from that city. 
แต่พระเจ้าไปเอาเยวนากลับมาส่งที่เนรเวนจนได้ But God somehow transported Jonah back right into that city of Nineveh again. When Jonah got back to this place, we can see that the transportation was not in Nineveh. Jonah got back to the place where God would use him. And before even Jonah opened his mouth to preach a repentance, Jonah himself experienced a repentance by himself first. So now we can see that the way of God is not the same as the way of man. So obviously, you can see that God's way are not the man's way at all. But we talk about the way that Jonah was supposed to go. We talk about the second that Jonah was supposed to go to the city of Nineveh. We talk about the second that Jonah was supposed to go to the city of Nineveh. In the book of Jonah. Uh, chapter two and three, you can see the extent that once Jonah hit the parameter of the city, he started walking and preach throughout that city. The book of Jonah uh, uh, make a detail that this city of Nineveh is so large. From the, the east to the west side, it took three days for travel by foot. I'm not sure how how the Jonah path or his journey is whether he cut right across to it or he go around the city or make some other turn. But God obviously gave them 40 days of chance to come. เพราะพี่วินาบอกสามวันคือเดินจากทิศหนึ่งทิศหนึ่งนะครับผมเชื่อว่าเมืองมันอยู่รอบๆแต่มีเมืองเล็กมันน้อยเยอะๆนะครับซึ่งโยนาอาจจะต้องเทศนาตลอด40วันนะครับไม่หยุดเลย So from one direction to the other one from one end to the other Jonah probably will preach to the surrounding city around in that parameter too nonstop for three days มากกว่าสามวันแน่ผมเชื่อว่าเป็นไปได้นะโยนาที่สามวันนี้คือเดินจากทิศหนึ่งทิศหนึ่งนะครับแต่ผมเชื่อว่าเมืองมันไม่ได้อยู่บนเส้นตรงนะครับเมืองมันอยู่ข้างบนข้างล่างข้างใต้ข้างทั่วไปหมดในเมืองเมืองเล็กชาวบ้านนะหมู่บ้านเล็กหมู่บ้านน้อยมากมายทุกคนจะต้องมีโอกาสได้ฟังข่าว I believe that it would take Jonah definitely more than three days because you cannot just do a straight line because the city is all all over the place up and down so it really take him a great amount a great deal of time to preach to all the surrounding country, including the major city itself. Okay, let's look at some of these things. Chamu did not do anything to Jonah, but he did not do anything to Jonah. But he did not do anything to Jonah. Now, the important point is that the citizens there, the Nineveh, have heard now that God is about to destroy them. And we see that Chamu did not do anything to Jonah. One, Chamu believed in the word of God. And we can see the reaction right away. First of all, number one, that the citizen there believe in the message that Jonah delivered. And more important that you need to realize that the citizen of the Nineveh do they believe in Jonah or in God, the message of God Himself? Oftentimes, we ourselves believe in the diff in the in the wrong persons, people. Because if the Nineveh listened only to Jonah, they did not believe or listen to God. Because Jonah himself could not destroy the city, or he could not do anything with them. Only God can, and the people did not listen to Jonah. But what did people say about us? We have to know God. We have to believe in God. We have to listen to the commands of God. Not a priest, not a Christian, or anyone else. For us, so important lesson to learn right here is that you and I, as Christians, we need to listen, be obedient to only God and His own word, not His messenger. Because 
the messages of others had no part in our life or they could not affect our life in any way. Only God and His message can. I emphasize this point again and again because I see many Christians succumbing to following individual, following someone they like, they like to hear on leadership style, but not God. Pastor or leadership come and go, and they will not have permanent posts. But God has a permanent position in our lives. So this is a we come like on my hand, the Lord will not let them take it one leg and then one come of city. One child will put my hand. And the second reaction that they have done, the Ninevites, secondly, is that they fast from the day one that I heard about this message for a few days. How did you look at the hand, my boy? Why can't you make up the monkey love at home? You have learned or maybe heard the sermon about fasting and some of you might even done fasting before. I'm sure many uh, of our uh, old time believers here have done fasting for a period of time. But let me emphasize that fasting without a goal or a wrong set objective is kind of useless. Because fasting must come with some kind of confessional uh, convictions. So fasting is just an out outward mean to show your deep conviction from within ourselves. But what if externally we fast for the show, but inside you receive no real conviction? What is the good news here? So those people who exercise on an annually basis uh, that they try to fast or become vegetarian for a period of time, Without any change from within, I have I don't have anything changed from Pharisee or the until the sun one. Even the Pharisees have fast three times a week. The joy who my question did what we can tam pit tam chua to be so we can yo see what I but in their heart they're not convicting of any kind of wrong at all. They don't feel any conviction. So Jesus tell them you guys are do doing useless practice. Pharisee or the hand sun until the sun one who would show a child and they come home. The Pharisee fast three days along a week just to show the people that they are very, uh, uh, they're very strict with their belief. But God looked deep within to their heart, those Pharisees, that within their heart they have not conviction, they do not show any kind of remorse. And many would fast just one or two days, but some went to the extent of ten days or more in order that God would show pity on them. And many of us are suffering from fasting, but we our friend or our family may show pity on us for what we are doing to a certain extent. But if your heart is truly not convicted, it's useless for God. And in, from verse 5 to 10, not only that they stop uh, eating solid food, but they also stop drinking water altogether. And not only for human. But livestock as well. <laughs> Let me say that uh, fasting from liquid or water is a lot harder than fasting from solid food. <laughs> you can actually fasting from food for maybe even months at a time, and some of us has a lot more reserve than the others. <laughs> But for what, what about liquid or water? Well, 
Remember that this past few weeks, the collapsed garment factory in Pakistan that many have been trapped there, and this is what we want to lady. She survived the ordeal, got stuck in there underneath the rubble for 27 days before being rescued. And they asked her, How did you survive that? I don't want to get into so much detail, but this lady being stuck in that rubble, she able to find somewhere uh, to have liquid to nourish her body. I don't mean to be very direct, but even your own urine, you have to consume them or drink it in order to keep yourself alive. But the Nidavai went all the way to the extreme that they stopped drinking water altogether in order to show the extent of their convictions. <laughs> Anyhow, even fasting from drinking water were not able to find forgiveness from our God yet. <laughs> But on the next lesson is that these people, the citizens, they beg God and beg for His loving mercy. And what God only listens is their begging, they're crying out for His mercy, not the way that they fast or that or, or practices. Did you know that the fasting, whether it's from food or water, is not really toward God Himself, but actually for your own purpose? The discipline of fasting is not really making us any holier in God's eye, but actually help us to focus and concentrate in our own life, in our own spirituality. So, for the extent that the Nidavites stop drinking water and fast on food altogether, it's for themselves that they realize that they must now repent completely to God. They cannot go out and have fun anymore. So by verse 6, when the king heard about all the fasting or the, the repentance of the citizen, although a lot of the royalties and many of the high society are not doing so, the king now put on into a decree. No, so when the king heard about this and they, he thought to himself that just because they're fasting and from food and water and, and even the livestock not enough, you must put on now a sackcloth. Normally people in the ancient day they wore the burlaps or sackcloth in order to put out a, 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 a ceremony for the deceased. ก็จะนะผ้ากระสอบไปถึงผ้าซึ่งทอด้วยปานปานนะครับไม่ใช่ฝ้ายนะที่เป็นเส้นผมคิดว่าปานเป็นยังไม่ถูกนะมันเป็
ต่การนุ่งผ้ากระสอบก็ไม่สามารถทำให้พระเจ้ายกโทษให้กับชาวเมืองได้ And even to the extent of they were the sackcloth on their own body, it's still not to the extent that God would forgive them. But so what is deeper now than what they put on themselves? That the whole citizen of that whole city ready to repent. ทั้งบ้านทั้งเมืองนะครับนุ่งห่มผ้ากระสอบตลอดเวลา40วันร้องไห้ข้ามควรต่อเจ้า Because the book of Jonah described that not just a few individuals but every citizen in that city from the youngest to the oldest from one in the palace and one in the village all of them agree on acting in grief แล้วพระเจ้าดูความพร้อมใจของคนทั้งหมด And so God see the readiness of their heart that they completely repent ฉะนั้นเราบ่อยครั้งเราเห็นนะความล้มเหลวไม่ใช่มาจากแผนไม่ดีหรือความสามารถไม่พอ Oftentimes we see the human failure is not from poor planning or that the, or the organization do not have the ability to go on แต่ไม่มีความพร้อมใจ But many times many of the project don't get done because people are not agree or the on it together เราต่างคนต่างทำใช่ไหมเราไม่ยอมร่วมมือกันเราไม่ยอมช่วยกันเราไม่มีความสามารถขี่ฉะนั้นพระเจ้าก็ไม่อยู่ในแผนการด้วย The project uh, or the group of people are not agree to do the project in one heart and one mind that's why things cannot get done and God did not see that in some of the people เราเชื่อไหมครับถ้าเรามีความพร้อมใจกันจริงๆริงไม่ว่าเรื่องอะไรนะไม่ว่าเล็กไม่ว่าใหญ่เราเห็นความสำเร็จในสิ่ง Believe me. Let me challenge you that if if people in any group or any entity have a united heart and mind, you can accomplish many many great feats. Let me tell you that if Christians are who love the Lord, they are in the same mind. They are in the same mind. They are in the same mind. In fact, the Bible will go on to describe that any saints, any Christians that are united in one heart and mind, and they about to accomplish anything, God will be a part of that, and He will bless them. แต่ถ้าเราไม่ได้ไปเสียเวลาศึกษาทำไมทำไมเราล้มเหลวทำไมเราเจ๊งทำไมมีปัญหาเยอะคำตอบเดียวมันก็ไม่พร้อมใจ Don't even bother to spend time making a research or pass out a survey why we did not find success in the thing that we do is simply because we're not united in one heart and mind. มีคนถามว่าจ้าเมื่อไรพระเจ้าจะส่งการฟื้นฟูมาเมื่อไรพระเจ้าจะไปพรพวกเราจริงเราลงคำตอบกันมาบ้างไหม Many of you ask me, uh, Pastor, how come God has not sent a revival? How come God will not give us the ready to serve Him? Well, I think in your heart, many of you have the answer already. Verse 5 and 10, now, what are they describing next in these chapters? ไม่หลับไม่นอนทรมานตัวเองนุ่งผ้ากระสอบแล้วก็นั่งบนกองขี้เท่าเป็นเป็นสิ่งต่อไปที่เขาทำนั่งบนกองขี้เท่าเขาก็นั่งบนกองขี้เท่าหมายความขี้เท่าฉลองทั้งตัวทั้งหัวทั้งตัวท้าทั้งตัวนั้นเป็นขี้เท่าเหมือนคนประหลาด You see the extent that the people the Nineveh went on once they heard the repentant message from Jonah not only that they fast for food from water put under the sackcloth and living in repentance and in sorrow But now they literally not just only sitting on ashes, but they, but they spray ashes on their own body, look like they were insane. คนทั้งมาทั้งเมือทั้งสัตว์ทั้งลูกเล็กเด็กแต่นั่นมันสัตว์ประหลาดใช่ไหมขี้เท่าฉลองทั้งตัวเลยนะเป็นสีขี้เท่าทั้งเมืองเลย The whole, the whole nation, the whole everyone in the whole in the city just just look ashen by the ashes, just from the little kid to the to the animal to the adult, look like they're in crazy homes. แต่นั่นก็ไม่สามารถทำให้พระเจ้ายกโทษเขาได้ Even up to that extent they could not with all those acts would guarantee a a forgiveness from God แต่พระบิดาบอกว่าสิ่งที่อยู่เบื้องหลังนั้นคือก็หยุดทำชั่ว But the background that the Bible tried to paint is that of all those acts they actually stop being wicked ผมคิดว่าในการทำสิ่งเหล่านี้นะทำให้เขาไม่เวลาไปทำชั่วหรือไปยุ่งกับเรื่องชั่วชั่วทั้งหลายใช่ไหมอดอาหารอดข้าวอดน้ำมานั่งทรมานตัวเองทำสารพัดจนไม่เวลาที่จะไปทำชั่ว
I think from the action that they put on uh, after the repentance message, you know, from sackcloth, from acting sorrowful, and all these ashes on, it prevents them that they don't have enough time to think of the new scheme to sin or living in a sinful lifestyle at that time. <laughs> Sometimes many of us act like a BC body. Not so much that you want to accomplish certain things, but there's a meaning behind for you for being busyness. No wonder uh, some of the parents say you go out and do all kind of and they create all kind of activity for their children or go attend many many classes. Not so much for the sake of the learning, but there's a meaning right behind those actions. Have you wondered why young people are out there in the green field kicking this little uh, white ball with stripe on it for hours on it? Why? What's the meaning of that? For people who consider as athletes, say, wow, this is one of the sports that they can participate in. But the one who created the uh, sport called soccer actually intended for people to get some physical exercise. <laughs> How can we deceive and get a bunch of kids to go out and uh, get some exercise done? Oftentimes, we people uh, go out and show repentance by this action or good deeds, but it is such what it is a deed and did not get our real repentance or forgiveness. And many of us just suck up and get used to doing repeating these acts over and over again that you forget the real meaning of behind. Just like those Indians who would journey to the Yangtze River to have their body washed and cleansed from sin. It's just a symbolism for them to go repeat year after year, but if they did not convict it within their own heart, it's kind of useless. Even for us Christians who come and do a confession or either to the priest or to the pastor or on a weekly basis, or some just do some, uh, some ritual, if they don't know it is what it means and have a real conviction, it's useless. Unless that person who go through all these acts completely convinced and want to be uh, convicted by God, they can bang their head to the wall until they bleed themselves to death or slash them their own body. It's just that they done accomplished nothing on their own. And all these torturing action or good deed are amount to nothing if they do not ask this real God for their forgiveness. Only God can forgive us. You can go on and do this ritual anywhere, anytime, but who, who really is going to forgive our sins? And who actually has the authority to forgive sins? And who really that has you and I in his hand has absolute control over our lives? Just like you go ask certain so and so and so for help or to, to do a, a favor, but you go to the wrong person for the wrong job. Exactly, 
said you need a scholarship or some loan money to help pay for your schooling, but yet you went to the beggar or the poor people who cannot afford to pay for themselves. Or some of you experience a severe sickness and then you go and ask the butcher for the prescription. I think you went to the wrong person. You went to the wrong person. So just because we convict of our own faults and just because you realize that you need to improve upon yourself. But if you do not go to the right source, the source that has its absolute authority, you went to the wrong people. The city of Nineveh has many deities and many uh, uh, gods all over the place. The citizen has worshipped this deity for, for generation after generation. Has anything done to them? But when Jonah showed up, he told him of one true God that can completely forgive you of your sin and your wickedness, and he can rescue you. This is the God, the same God that has created you, and he has absolute control over your life. He is the one who controls your future. So the people, the Nineveh, need to start all over again with the right people, with the right source, with the right God, and with the right uh, action. Uh, in American, in American saying, that's a saying, say that you go knock on the wrong door. Because just because you go and seek out for help, it's because you knock on the wrong door. What is open, it's not the kind of help that you're looking for. So why don't you and I directly go to the right source, which is a true God, a holy God, who is there to provide us help? You've seen before, right? The citizen of the world in many cultures, many countries go to the wrong God, go to the wrong deity in order for their sin to be atoned. They feel, they feel sorry for their own sin, they feel sorry for their own wrongdoing, but when they went to the wrong place, the wrong deity, and so their life cannot be changed. I ask that God help us, that we know and realize who the real God is, and that you who experience the love of this God, go and spread it and tell others about his love too, that he can help. And God indeed showed His mercy on the sin on ten of thousand of the Ninevites because they gone through the acts of repentance and they truly repent of their own action and so God will forgive us and do the same. And one last thing I want to emphasize that God gave them a deadline. He did give them a 40 days of leeway. Each one of us, you do not have your whole lifetime to ponder about this. Each one of you has a fixed amount of time left. So you and I need to wake up and listen to God here it's because your time may be due very soon. So each one of you should take advantage why we still have time left here on earth to come back to Him. May God help us with this. Let us pray. Dear God, 
When Jonah went to Nineveh, he did not expect a whole lot, but you did. You can see that through the action of just one man, hundreds of thousands came to repentance and found a new life in you. Thank you so much, Lord God. Not because Jonah was doing anything special, he actually was a coward. He tried to run away from his assignment. But what about us? Are we a coward when we do not want to tell others about Jesus Christ? Are we feeling indifference about our neighbors, our friends, our co-workers? May it not be, Lord God. May, may we do even more to bring our loved one even. Start with our own family first. Start with the prayer for those who hasn't come to know your grace yet, Lord God. And we pray for them and that we will share the good news with them. It's a simple message that Jesus died on their behalf. That's all that you have to say. Lord God, help us that we can learn from you today greatly about the acts of repentance. That we were not just going to do it superficially, but without a true repentance from within, it's very really useless in your eyes. Thank you once again for this lesson, and may we have a wonderful time left that we can fellowship with one another and get to know one another even better. Thank you so much for everybody that made an effort to come here today on a wonderful Sunday morning. We'd rather be nowhere else but here to worship you. So much for John and his family. And I ask especially to be with the ladies group too, that they have a wonderful time learning from you and learning from one another. In Jesus' name that we pray.